Uh, welcome back. So in this uh, video, I'm going to continue talking about how we model harvest. And to do that, I'm going to leverage the logistic growth model that we talked a lot about in previous mo lectures as uh, you know, the base model uh, that we used for understanding population dynamics and sensitivity and equilibrium, and also the base model we used to develop the models for species interactions like Lotka Volterra. Um, so just a reminder that this model in both its discrete and continuous forms uh, predicts uh, that growth, DNDT, kind of has this parabolic relationship with two equilibrium uh, at zero and at K. And the growth when the growth rate is positive, the population increases to that equilibrium at K. And when you simulate it over time, it has this nice sigmoidal shape. And this actually down here, which I haven't shown before, is the actual analytical solution uh, to the logistic growth model. If you can solve for it analytically, you don't have to just simulate it. Um, but when we want to add flexibility, we're going to just stick to numerical simulation because it allows us to add complexity without having to do through do some fairly complicated derivations. OK, so uh, like the slide says, with no human intervention, the population will go to its carrying capacity at 500 because the population growth rate is positive through this whole period, uh, this whole range of population sizes. So then we would ask, well, what happens if we harvest with a quota of 100 individuals? And we did this, do that just once. So let's look at what would happen. So let's zoom in a little bit. And so we'd have that initial harvest, and the population would start at K at 500. It would drop down to 400. When the population is at 400, we can use the growth curve to figure out what its growth rate is. It's a little bit less. Uh, than 25, so maybe 23. And so the population would grow in that year back up to about 423. And the next year, it would grow again. Uh, it would grow about 18. And then it would grow again. It would grow, you know, maybe about 13 or 14, and so on and so forth. And then it would eventually grow back to the carrying capacity. Uh, and you can see the size of this increment gets smaller every year because it's, it's growing back asymptotically. So you'd kind of see something that, that's at its uh, carrying capacity. Then you do the harvest, it jumps down to 400. And then you kind of see it from that point continuing on you know, just that upper part of the sigmoidal curve of the logistic growth curve. OK, so that, that tells us that if we harvest a population one time, as long as we do it at a reasonable level, most populations will recover, not all. So we can't make that default assumption. But under the, log under the logistic model, at least, if the logistic model is true, then if we harvest, the population will eventually recover. Again, that's a pretty strong assumption. But if that is a, a valid assumption, we'll get that recovery. That said, the other thing that I think is an even more tenuous assumption here is the idea that we'd only harvest a population once, and then we'd leave it forever and walk away and be done with it. Uh, so let's think about a more realistic scenario. Uh, if the population is currently at the carrying capacity and we harvest 25 individuals every year, what's going to happen? So let's, again, start by just doing looking at this graphically rather than looking at it mathematically. So I'm going to zoom in and say our quota is 25 individuals. So in that first year, we're going to harvest 25 individuals. So we're going to drop down to 425. Then we're going to have a growth rate of maybe 7 or 8. And so we're going to grow back a little bit. But we're not going to grow back as much as the harvest. So we won't get back to carrying capacity because the growth rate uh, here is below the harvest rate. And so the next year, we're going to start off at that point. Uh, so it's maybe about 482, 483. We're going to subtract a number, another 25. At that point, the growth rate has gone up. So we'll grow back 11. But again, we won't stay there because we harvested 25. We 11 grew back, so it's still a net loss. We'll grow back somewhat. We'll harvest the next year. Um, growth rate has gone up to 15. We'll grow, grow back 15, but the net still a net loss of 10. Uh, and this is going to keep going on like this until we reach some point where the amount we grow back becomes 25. 
and so the amount that we harvest and the amount that we grow back uh, are going to eventually reach an equilibrium. So this model would have a new equilibrium. That new equilibrium is not at the carrying capacity. This new equilibrium is that balance between how much is harvested and how much grows back. So we're seeing that effect of harvesting uh, actually very analogous to how we saw the effect of uh, competition uh, in the logical Volterra model. It's reducing the equilibrium. In that case, it was because uh, the competitor was using up resources. In this case, it's because individuals are being removed from the population. Um, so we're going to eventually reach this equilibrium where harvest equals growth uh, of 25 per year. Uh, and so that's going to be when, uh, critically, when at this point where the growth curve hits the harvest level, the quota hits that point on the growth curve. So that leads us to this idea of, to sustainable harvests. So if we define yield or recruitment as the number of new individuals or recruits that come in, into the population at any point in time, so the amount that you're growing back each year is that recruitment, uh, then sustainable harvest will occur uh, when the harvest and the recruitment are equal. So the, the harvest equals the yield equals growth. Uh, because of this, uh, the growth curve can sometimes be referred to as the sustainable yield curve uh, because every point on the growth, growth curve uh, represents a potential equilibrium point where yield equals growth. So, uh, yeah, so you, you could imagine that there are uh, different points on that curve that each could be a new equilibrium depending on what the how much harvesting is occurring. Uh, that leads to an obvious question. Uh, what is the largest amount of uh, yield, the largest number of individuals can be removed from a population uh, that can be taken without depleting the population with it still being sustainable? Because you can imagine that there, there's, there's a threshold beyond which if you remove individuals, uh, the growth rate is, there's no place where the growth rate can match uh, the recovery rate. So I'll ask you to to look at this curve for a minute and think about uh, what population size produces the maximum sustainable yield. So is the population, if the population is here at A, is it gonna produce the maximum sustainable yield? If it's here at B, kind of halfway uh, between extinction and the carrying capacity, is that gonna maximize yield? Or is yield gonna be maximized when the population is at its carrying capacity? Give you a second to think about that. Cool. So intuitively, the population is going to produce the maximum yield when the growth rate is the highest. And that's going to occur at this point B, because that's the point where the this curve is at its peak. That's the highest growth rate. Um, and so units on this particular graph are different than the previous one in terms of the values of n and k and r. But in this particular case, if k is at 10, and this is producing a peak at about 2.5, uh, if you remove more than 2.5 individuals per unit area per year, then there's no point where the quota intersects the growth, and you're above the maximum sustainable yield. OK, so to dive into this a little bit more mathematically, uh, sustainable harvest occurs when there is no change in the size of the population, delta n equals zero. So that's kind of a definition of a, an equilibrium or a steady state. So if we define the harvest at point t, harvest sub t, equal to the harvest at time t, h sub t, then we can say that the change in the population, n at t plus 1 minus n of t, our, our net growth, equals what's predicted by our growth curve, uh, minus the harvest. So the key part here, and this is, is actually remarkably simple, uh, but trips people up. When I want to add harvest to the model, I'm literally doing so by just subtracting the heart number of harvested individuals. So this minus h here is how we add harvest to the model. So uh, harvest is not, it's not complicated. It's really the simplest thing we could possibly do. The net 
net change in the population is growth minus harvest. So it's just subtracted off. So again, we're always following the modeling principle of making the simplest possible change to a model to represent an additional process or an additional level of complexity. And adding harvest is a quite simple thing to do. So then we can show that our sustainable harvest when delta n equals zero is gonna occur, like we've seen graphically, when the harvest rate equals the growth rate. So if the we wanna find, if the harvest rate equals the growth rate defines a, a potential sustainable uh, e new equilibrium, we wanna figure out the maximum sustainable yield, this MSY, is gonna be the, the point that maximizes that sustainable yield. So what I'm gonna leave as the exercise is to figure out how does the maximum sustainable yield relate to the carrying capacity and the intrinsic growth rate? So this is our growth curve and we wanna find uh, what value of H maximizes this. We wanna know is solve for uh, what is the N, uh, what is the H, basically we wanna solve for what is the, the, the value of the harvest that maximizes it and what is the population size there. So it, intuitively it should be finding that peak of that curve there. And as a reminder, if we wanna maximize something analytically, we take the derivative and we set it equal to zero. So if you take the derivative of this uh, with respect to N, uh, you can maximize this curve. Don't take the derivative with respect to R or K because we're not changing the parameters. We're not doing a sensitivity analysis. Um, and then I wanna wrap up this section by saying, just a reminder that there's nothing sacred about the logistic model. The logistic model was just our simplest model we could write down that describes a population that goes to some sort of equilibrium and that there's lots of other shapes that that curve could take other than the logistic curve that the, the, the parabola that the logistic curve draws out. And so these are just examples of other plausible growth models that have uh, different growth rates as a function of population size, uh, different points of equilibrium. Uh, this green one exhibits uh, an allele effect, so a, point, a population size below which the population collapses even though it's not at zero. Um, and would, they would result in very different sustainable yields. So even though I've drew them, they have the same maximum sustainable yield that's gonna occur at very different population sizes. So the, the solution you get for when the population size is maximized is gonna be very sensitive to that choice of curve, um, unlike some of the other things we found about equilibrium. Thanks, I'll wrap up there and we'll pick up um, in the next videos under some specific models for how we model uh, different harvesting strategies.